Today I will show you how to make this audio visualization that is fully procedural and made in geometry notes. It works with any sound, it works with any object or curve or text. You can adjust any values and you can add any materials you want. So let me show you how it's done. So let's go from the 3D viewport directly to the geometry notes. Create a new node group and delete the group input. The first thing we need to do is to add a curve. This curve will serve as a foundation for our visualization. For this project, I'm gonna use a curve circle, but you can use whatever curve you want. Now let's make some space, because now we will add instance on points node, because we will use the points to tell Blender where the instances will be distributed. Now for the instance object, we will use another curve, but this time we will use quadrilateral, which is a four-sided polygon, which is also known as quad. Now before we actually connect this curve to the instance socket, we need to fill it first, and then we need to convert the curve to the mesh. The reason for converting this curve to the mesh is because we will use extrusion later in this project. Now we have two options how to fill the curve. We can fill the curve either with triangles or with n-gons. But in this case I would prefer to use n-gons because n-gon is only one single face and it works better with extruding. Now as you can see, now you can see the instances are overlapping because they are way too big. So we will scale them down first. Now we need to tell the blender to rotate the instances along the normals of the circle. We can do this with some additional nodes. First we need to add transform geometry node. And after adding we need to make some space. So select the nodes and move them further from the instance on points node. The easiest way how to rotate instances along the normal of the base object is by adding a normal input and then plugging the normal output into the align Euler to vector node. So add the node, then plug the normal into the vector input and then plug the rotation output into the rotation input of the instance on points node. Then if you don't have the same results as I do, you need to switch the axis. But the default axis seems to work for me, so I'm gonna leave on the x axis. Now it's almost what we want, but still we need to rotate the instances along the y axis. And because we want the instances to face out of the circle, we will rotate them by 90 degrees on the y axis. Now this is the part where we will be extruding our instances. So let's add extrude geometry node. Also make sure that the individual extruding is enabled. Add a join geometry node and connect the instances with the extruded version. So we cannot see inside of the extruded object. But we also need to merge the overlapping geometry of these two objects. So for that reason add a merge by distance node. Now when we go back to the extrude mesh node, we need to drive this offset scale with a texture because that will be the biggest part of our visualization. So make some space and add a noise texture and plug the factor into the offset scale. Also make sure to switch the texture to 4D because we will use this W slider to control the time and texture variations. We don't want the extrusion to go inwards, so for that reason we will add a color ramp to clamp the extrusion amount and to avoid the negative numbers. Now as you can see the extrusion does not go inwards anymore because now we cannot extrude below zero. Now we need to realize the instances to convert them into mesh, so we can extrude each face individually. If you play with the W slider now, you will get this randomized effect, which is exactly what we want. Now with this color ramp we added before, you have also the option to control the fall off by adding an external sliders and moving them towards black or white values. Now we need to add a math node and set the operation to multiply. The second value will serve as a multiplicand and also as an intensity slider which will be controlled with our audio track. But we can do that later. Right now we will add another cylinder which is going to fill the empty space inside of the visualization. So add another join geometry node and connect the visualization with the cylinder that we just added. Move the node away and scale down the cylinder so it's matching the height of the visualization. Now before the visualization is connected with the cylinder, we need to add a set material node to set the material for each part. Because I want to add a separate material for the cylinder and for the visualization. If you want the same material for both parts, you can just add the set material node after joining them together. We can also procedurally control the visibility of the cylinder by adding a switch node. I think right now is the perfect time to actually simplify our node group into one node. So select everything with Ctrl A and then with Ctrl G you will create a node group. Then if you press tab on your keyboard you will be able to see all the nodes packed into one single node. We will use this node group to control the most important settings. So add two math nodes with divide operation. Then add a switch node and connect both math nodes into the input of the switch node. Also don't forget to switch the type from the geometry to float. Now choose any output of the group input and plug it to the resolution of the cylinder and to the resolution of the curve circle. 
This way the cylinder will have the same resolution as the curved circle does. Now do the same thing for the radius with the switch node and then plug the checkbox into the switch input. I also changed the connection of the nodes in order to fix the scaling. Also add a math node with a subtraction operation and put it between the switch and the cylinder node. And then again plug the input to the node interface. Now if we control the same value from the subtract node, we will scale the inside cylinder down. If you adjust the radius, you will adjust the overall scale of the visualization. The same thing applies for the resolution slider. But when you check even spacing, the resolution of the visualization will adapt to the scale of the whole shape, which I think is a pretty cool option to have. Now also do the same thing for the math node that affects the intensity of the texture, then add another multiply math node, and do the same thing for the input again. You can also change the names of individual inputs in the interface section of the node group, which is located in the sidebar. I will do the same for the cylinder visibility, quadrilateral dimensions, for the texture scale and also for the W slider. Also to easily change the materials, you can also apply the material inputs for both parts. Now when the visualization is done, we can control any value, which also means it's time to add the audio track. So open the graph editor, go to frame 1 and add a keyframe to the W slider. Then go to the last frame and increase the value, then add keyframe again. Now it is important to set the interpolation mode to linear, so the animation speed is even. Now add a keyframe to the first math node, that is increasing the intensity of the noise texture. Go to channel menu and click on sounds to samples. Now choose your audio file. And now when you hit the play button, you should see the visualization is working and the audio file is multiplying with the texture. But we cannot hear the music, so we need to go back to viewport and add a speaker to our scene. Go back to frame 1 to align the tracks and choose the same song. Now the visualization with the music should be synchronized. Thanks for watching till the end, I hope this video had some value for you, if you found this video helpful. And if you are a 3D artist, you should definitely check out my other videos about 3D and Blender. That's all for me, and I will see you in the next video. See ya!